Hi everyone, welcome back to the basic networking course. In the last class we have discussed about application layer protocols and today we are going to discuss about network security. Going for network security, we will look into what is security, what is the need for security, who is vulnerable and the basic common security attacks and their countermeasures like firewalls and intrusion detection systems, denial of service attacks, TCP attacks, packet sniffing and social problems. So what is security? Security is nothing but freedom from risk or danger that is safety or freedom from doubt or fear that is confidence or something that gives or assures safety is called as a security. For example, if you consider an organization, in the case of an organization, safety is nothing but uh, preventing loss of the documents or the things or the assets of that particular organization. If you consider the case of a government organization, it can be preventing sabotage or attacks or if you consider the case of a home, it can be preventing thefts or attacks. Why do we need security? Security is required because to protect the vital information while still allowing access to those who need it. For example, trade secrets, medical records, etc. And for providing authentication and access control for the resources, example AFS and to guarantee the availability of resources. Who is vulnerable to those security attacks? Financial institutions and banks, internet service providers, pharmaceutical companies, government and defense agencies, contractors to various government agencies, multinational companies and on the whole anyone on the network is vulnerable to an attack. So let's see what are the common security attacks and their countermeasures. The first thing for example finding a way into the network. And for that, we have firewall as a countermeasure. And other, the other thing is exploiting software bugs or buffer overflows. For that, we have the intrusion detection systems. And denial of service. Denial of service means the services are being denied from the server part or some attacker is denying the services which we should get. And for example, uh, it can be prevented by using ingress filtering and IDS. And then TCP hijacking. TCP hijacking can be prevented by using IPsec and packet sniffing can be prevented by using encryption of it can be used by using SSH, SSL and HTTPS and social problems can be avoided by using education. Going for firewalls, firewall is the first countermeasure for this attacks and the basic problem is that many network applications and protocols have security problems that are fixed over time. So it is very difficult for the users to keep up with the changes and keep the host secure and one of the main solution for this is that the administrators will limit the access to the end host by using a firewall and the firewall is being kept up to date by the administrators. A firewall is like a castle with a drawbridge that is there is only one point of access to the network. This can be either good or bad. This firewall can be either a hardware or a software. For example, some routers come with inbuilt firewall functionality. For example, IPFW, IP chains, PF on the systems, Windows XP, Unix systems, Max or ASX have inbuilt firewalls. A firewall is used to filter the packets based on the combination of features. These are called as packet filtering firewalls. There are other types of firewalls too. For example, they will drop packets based on the destination port number 23 and that is called as a telnet. We can use any combination of TCP or UDP header information. For example, MAN IPFW on Unix 47 is an example for that. When you look into the slide, you can see how a computer with a default Windows XP installed will look like. You can see a lot of commands like TCP open, UN, PNP like that. It might need some of these services or might not be able to control all the machines on the network. What does a firewall look like? It depends on the need of the firewall. For example, IPFW. If you look into the slide, you can see how IPFW look like. Other examples are like Windows XP and Mac OS X have built-in and third-party firewalls and they will have different graphical user interfaces and varying amount of complexity and power. So it will be according to the need how a firewall will be designed. Going for intrusion detection system, an intrusion detection system is used to monitor for suspicious activity on a network. It can protect against the software exploits like buffer overflows. An example for open source ideas is SNOT. You can go and check into www.snod.org to know about the intrusion detection system. Let's see how an intrusion detection system will work. It uses intrusion signature. It has got well-known packets of behavior like ping sweeps, port scanning, server indexing, OS fingerprinting and DOS items. For example, IRIX vulnerability in webdisk.cgi and can make a rule to drop the packets containing the line. You can check the line in the slide. 
and however an intrusion detection system is only useful if the contingency plans are in place to curb the attacks as they are occurring. The next one is the denial of service. The main purpose of denial of service is that to make a network service unusable usually by overloading a server or the network and there are many different kinds of DOS attacks like SYN flooding, SMURF distributed attacks and a mini case study on Cordred is provided here to make you understand about the DOS attacks. So now let's look into what is an SYN flooding attack. In an SYN flooding attack, the sender sends SYN packet with bogus source address and the server responds with an SYN ACK and keeps the state about TCP half open connection. Eventually the server memory will get exhausted with the state. And the solution for this particular thing is that to use an SYN cookie. In response to an SYN, a new cookie or a special cookie can be created for the connection and it can just forget everything else. Then can recreate the forgotten information when the ACK comes in from a legitimate connection. Another type of denial of service is SMURF or SMURF. In this case, uh, the source IP address of a broadcast ping is being forged and as a result of that, large number of machines will respond back to the victim and thus overloading it and hence it will cause a denial of service. Going for distributed denial of service, the distributed denial of service is using the same technique as that of DOS or denial of service but on a very larger scale. An example for DDoS is Sub7 server, Trojan and IRC boards. It will infect a large number of machines with a zombie program and the zombie program will log into the channel and awaits the commands. For example, the board command and the result and how it works is given on the slide. Please go through that and read more about this DDoS attack in the given website. Now let's look into a mini case study, Codred. And this is a case study regarding the denial of service attack. In July, in July 19, 2001, over 359,000 computers were infected with code red in less than 14 hours. It used a recently known buffer exploit in Microsoft IAS. And the damage caused by that particular code red is estimated over 2.6 billion. Now let's see why this code red comes under this DOS category. The Codred launched a DOS attack against www.whitehouse.government.in from 20th to 28th of every month and it spent the rest of its time infecting all the other hosts. This is why it comes under denial of service attack. So how can we protect ourselves from this DOS attack? We can use a method called as ingress filtering. In ingress filtering, if the source IP of a packet comes in on an interface which does not have a route to the packet, then drop that particular packet and RFC 2267 has more information about this ingress filtering and we have to stay on top of the CERT advisories and the latest security patches. A fix for the IAS buffer overflow was released 16 days before the code read and has been deployed. Coming to the conclusion, the internet works only because we implicitly trust one another. It is very easy to exploit this particular trust. The same holds true for software also. So it is very important to stay on top of the latest CERT advisories and know how to patch any of the security holes. So now we have come to an end of the session. I hope you all understood about network security, the countermeasures and the types of attacks that we face in a network and who are all the vulnerable people in a network. And we have discussed about firewalls, DOS attacks, DDoS attacks, ingress filtering, everything. And in the next session, we'll discuss and continue about cryptography and network security. Thank you.